Good morning, and welcome to episode 137 of Getting Rich. I'm your host, Rich Checkin, President of Asset Strategies International, and today is Wednesday, August 23rd, 2023. This week, all eyes for economic news uh, worldwide are focused on really two major events. The first one is the gathering at Jackson Hole, Wyoming, uh, with uh, Fed Chairman Jerome Powell uh, and finance ministers from Japan, the UK, and from Europe. Uh, and the second one is the meeting of the BRICS nation, that's Brazil, Russia, India, China, and South Africa, in Johannesburg, South Africa, and that is ongoing. I'll talk a little bit about Jackson Hole, then I'll cover the prices for the week, and then we'll take a look at what's going on in Johannesburg. Uh, first off, in Jackson Hole, everybody is looking for guidance from Federal Reserve Chairman Jerome Powell as to where he might go with interest rates going forward. The market still is, is dying for news news that he's done, uh, or at least he's pausing for a considerable amount of time so the stock market can take off again, uh, I don't think that's coming. I mean, he's very clear that inflation is not under control. They do not believe they have broken the economy, and therefore he still sees further interest rate increases coming, and that came out of the minutes of the last meeting of the Federal Open Market Committee. Uh, I beg to differ. I think they have started to break some things. We're seeing uh, issues. 30-year uh, mortgages are up near 8%. So where people had gone to their mortgages to go ahead and uh, cash out, refinance, and cover uh, expenses, uh, they're not able to do that anymore because they'd have to refinance at a significantly higher interest rate. So as a result, they're turning to personal debt, credit card debt to take care of necessities. We're seeing personal credit card debt over a trillion dollars over the past month. And as a result, uh, people are just trying to take care of their daily needs that way, and that's not going to work out at 25% interest on those credit cards. Uh, the bond yields continue to surge. They're near 15-year highs, and despite all of that and the debt problems at all levels, uh, gold is still holding up pretty well in those headwinds. Uh, and you know, Jerome Powell will tell you that the, the market is strong and resilient, that the labor market's strong and resilient. I'm seeing chinks in the armor. I still see uh, concerns at the banking sector, and I still see uh, problems looming in commercial debt as that starts to roll over. Stay tuned. In the meantime, let's take a look at the prices for the past week. I told you gold was resilient. It's down. It's the only precious metal down this week, uh, but it's only down 0.14% to 1904.20 an ounce from 1906.90 last week. Silver's the big winner. Uh, it's up 4.7% the past week, up $1.06 an ounce to $23.85 from $22.79 last week. Uh, platinum's up 4.3% to $936 an ounce from $897 an ounce last week. And palladium's up 4.6%, just lagging silver, to $1,316 an ounce from $1,258 an ounce last week. With silver vastly outperforming gold this past week, the gold-silver ratio has dropped, so it takes less ounces now of silver to buy an ounce of gold. Uh, this week that stands at 80.13 ounces of silver. Last week it was 84.03. And amidst it all, the dollar is surging slightly. It's up to 103.92 on the index versus 103.10 last week. Now when we look at what's going on in South Africa, you know, President Putin, who can't attend uh, the meeting in South Africa because there's a uh, arrest warrant out for him for war crimes, uh, he attended virtually and he had some comments that basically they're running down a path uh, where uh, we'll see de-dollarization, that uh, the world is basically shedding dollars. Uh, I believe a South African uh, president had comments similar to the effect that, you know, since the U.S. is weaponizing the dollar, they're looking for alternatives. There, however, are a lot of critics that remain very skeptical. The U.S. economy is uh, the strongest among a bunch of weak currencies all around the world, and therefore uh, there's no chance that we're moving away from dollar domination and dollar hegemony. 
hegemony. Um, but uh, the, the folks that are pushing for this will continue uh, to uh, ring the bells that it, the death knell has been sounded for the dollar. I personally don't see this uh, changing anytime soon. There's really no other substitute for the U.S. dollar out there right now that may change over time. I don't think it's good that we've weaponized the dollar and we've pushed both our enemies and our friends away, uh, but uh, there's no replacement in sight anytime soon, and those trading relationships are going to take some time to develop, uh, even though they're pushing for it. So a lot of news out there uh, this week. Pay attention to what's going on in South Africa. Pay attention to what's going on uh, in Jackson Hole. Uh, for us, it's very clear the dollar is uh, showing some strength, and yet gold is holding up incredibly well. Give it time. Uh, don't uh, panic that you're not seeing higher gold prices sooner. Embrace the fact that you have an extended opportunity to buy at much lower prices. We have not changed the way we do business here. Congress continues to overspend. They're showing no change in that pattern. That leads to increased debt. That leads to inflation of the money supply, which leads to higher gold prices in dollar terms. Make no mistake, you've got an absolute opportunity to buy cheaply, to buy well, right here right now suggest you do so as always we want you to go ahead and follow us on the youtube channel uh like us send us your comments and questions subscribe to social media Sub subscribe to our once monthly information line newsletter and our twice weekly always something interesting alerts but please don't ever forget that getting rich starts with keeping what's yours